What's up everybody, this is Master EN Gamer. Blizzard granted me access to the recent Overwatch 2 Alpha, and not only did I get a chance to play test the new hero Sojourn and the other reworked heroes, but also I took the opportunity to poke around the four brand new maps that are getting added in this first Overwatch 2 beta to see if I could find any secrets or hidden details or other sorts of teasers, and boy were there indeed some interesting discoveries to be made. So in today's video, I'm gonna be covering all the brand new Easter eggs, secrets, secrets, teasers, and other curious little details that are present on the four brand new Overwatch 2 maps. Real quick first though, I'd like to remind you to subscribe and hit up that bell icon to never miss any future Overwatch 2 news and videos from my channel. But now let's get into the video, starting off with Midtown. Midtown New York is easily the most detailed dense of the four maps added in this first Overwatch 2 beta. Not only is it visually stunning in the way it captures the city's aesthetic, but also it's jam-packed with curious little easter eggs and some rather mysterious details as well. Starting off in the attacker's pizzeria spawn room, we can actually see two framed pictures featuring an Italian pizza chef fighting off Talon agents during the events of Retribution in Rialto. Seemingly, these are just funny little easter eggs Blizzard decided to stick in that are not only referencing the Retribution event, but also implying that the pizza chef, presumably the same one that owns the pizzeria these pictures are located in, was actually present in Rialto and, to some extent, either helped Blackwatch fight off Talon, or or more likely was probably just trying to save his own hide and in the process, you know, had to bonk a few Talon skulls. Jumping forward though to the latter stretch of Midtown, the train station, which serves as the final point of the map, contains a handful of additional little Overwatch references. For starters, we can see nice little references to the other Overwatch 2 maps in the presence of posters scattered about the train station, with a couple even featuring India and Rio, both of which are new maps we know are going to be coming in Overwatch 2 but weren't actually playable in the alpha or first beta, as well as a train schedule board which features the name of various other Overwatch locations, such as Blizzard World, Malavento, and even King's Row. However, beyond these visual details within the train station, the most interesting secret going on here appears to actually come through the audio we hear as part of the train station's intercom system. Among the background noise of outside traffic and trains coming and going, we can overhear the train station's intercom periodically making announcements. The majority of these announcements are generic PSAs about not littering and watching your step when boarding the trains, but a handful of these announcements make a reference to an otherwise unknown incident which apparently took place on track 19. Spanning across four separate announcement audio clips amidst the various other generic ones, we can hear requests for maintenance teams 1, 2, and 3, as well as security teams 5 and 7, all being requested to urgently report to track 19. Now, in the station itself, there's no visual indicator of a track 19. As far as we can tell, it's not visually or physically present anywhere within the map itself, but it is curious to hear the intercom speaker put so much emphasis on this one person particular track. And in fact, this isn't even the only time we hear an audio reference to track 19 in the Midtown map. Jumping over to the fire station, which serves as the first capture point for Midtown, we can hear a police scanner radio inside the fire station, making similar sort of announcements to those heard within the train station. While these sound bits are instead reporting on various emergency service activity across the city, one of them does still specifically mention the incident on track 19. Furthermore, if you consider the real-world New York City EMS codes that are used by the actual police and fire departments there, the codes 1041 and Code 3 mean a bridge-slash-elevated roadway has collapsed and that the response should be urgent with use of lights and sirens. This just even further indicates that whatever incident took place on Track 19 seemingly involved a significant amount of structural damage to the track itself, and thus is requiring an immediate response from the city's emergency services. There's even a 
possible third audio reference to the Track 19 incident in the L train we see leading up to the first point of Midtown, where once again there's an intercom speaking and references there being some sort of unspecified interruptions on the track ahead, which is the reason the train is just sitting idle on the tracks as we see it. Now, none of the announcements within this L train specify track 19, but it does seem to indicate that there was some sort of incident or accident up ahead, which has prevented the train from continuing to move. And while this realistically could be any number of different things, it seems likely that whatever's delaying the L train here could be the same incident we hear being referenced elsewhere. Now, outside of just these direct and implied references to some sort of incident, it's also worth noting that whatever happened on track 19 might actually be the reason reason that Overwatch is present on Midtown at all. Just considering the gameplay objective of this map, the goal for the attackers is to escort a fire truck from the fire station to the train station. Oftentimes there are story connections to the payloads and different objectives of any given map, some of which are only very subtly alluded to until certain points in time when the greater Overwatch story ends up making further developments. So if this does end up being the story behind what we're doing in Midtown, then it seems very likely that this Track 19 incident will end up developing further as time goes on, potentially even in the PvE side of the game once we end up getting some of that more story-focused content. But beyond just the acknowledgement of the Track 19 incident, there are actually a few additional easter eggs snuck into the train station intercom announcements, the first being a mention of Blizzard World. and the second possibly referencing the destroyed train and bridge we see on the Route 66 map following the events of the Reunion animated short. Considering the locations of New York relative to Phoenix, Arizona, and the route that Route 66 travels through between them, the destruction of the Route 66 train bridge is almost certainly the reason the Phoenix train is being delayed indefinitely. Additionally, if we hop back over to the fire station, we can hear a number of additional police scanner transmissions beyond just the Track 19 one, most of which are fairly uninteresting, save for one where they mention some sort of incident at the Overwatch Museum. Now, more than likely, I assume this is referring to the same Overwatch museum we see in the original Overwatch cinematic from way back before the first Overwatch game even released, but unfortunately, there's just really no way to be sure. Now, it's never been stated where the museum we see in this animated short is actually physically located within the Overwatch universe, but certainly, at the very least, it seems plausible that a museum like this could be located in New York City, and if that does end up being the case, then my first thought after that is that maybe the police scanner is actually referencing the break-in we see take place in this animated short. Admittedly, timeline-wise, that wouldn't work at all, since we know the events of Overwatch 2 take place at least a bit of time after the events of Overwatch 1, but let's be honest, Blizzard has never been super consistent with the Overwatch timeline, so maybe they shifted a few events around there, or maybe it's just a reference to the Overwatch Museum that they thought would be a fun little Easter egg to include. It's also possible that whatever incident took place at the Overwatch Museum is even maybe linked to the incident on Track 19, but unfortunately, it's just impossible to say for sure at this point. Moving on to another visual secret present in Midtown, the city itself is covered with various posters, billboards, and advertisements featuring different movies, businesses, and products, but two posters in particular, which actually show up in multiple separate locations across the entire map, seem to be a little bit more mysterious. The two posters are perhaps best seen in this alleyway behind the pizzeria spawn room, and at first glance are very difficult to evaluate just given how badly these two images are faded. However, taking a 
a closer look at this first poster in particular, we can adjust the brightness and saturation of the image to get a bit of a better look. And here's what seems to be going on with it. For starters, this image actually appears to be an amalgamation of two separate posters stacked on top of each other, which presumably over time have both faded and worn away. The first appears to be some sort of police or maybe public safety type poster, since we can clearly see the word safety across the top, in addition to what may be some sort of police car or other sort of small road vehicle. The second poster, however, is actually a movie poster, and is in fact one we've seen before on other maps like Hollywood. Specifically, it's the movie Hero of My Storm, which is most notable for the fact that it stars D.Va as one of the characters, and by comparing the poster on Midtown to this poster we can see very clearly on Hollywood, we can notice a few identical details between the two of them, namely being D.Va in the center, who is wearing the exact same outfit and in the exact same pose, as well as a portion of the tornado storm in the background, which is sucking up a bunch of vehicles and debris. Now, admittedly, the movie poster portion of this Midtown image we see here has been seemingly very heavily warped and cropped outside of the fact that it's stacked on top with the safety poster, but aside from that, it's pretty safe to say that this is in fact what we're looking at on this particular Midtown poster. Moving on to the second notable poster though, this one is a bit more interesting. Once again, it appears to be an amalgamation of at least two separate faded posters stacked on top of each other, with the topmost layer, which is mostly visible on the left side, seemingly being some sort of Korean football or soccer poster, as we have the clearly visible Lucio ball at the top, along with a bit of Korean text in the bottom left, which when considering that the leftmost portion of the word may have actually been cropped off, seemingly translates to the word Nike as in the real-world brand which is well known for producing athletics-focused shoes and other apparel. And considering this, the strange sort of mechanical component or machine we see in the center part of the left side of this image may in fact be the leg of a footballer. It does look noticeably similar to Lucio's legs and shoes, which at first glance almost appear like some sort of cybernetic augmentation but are actually just really wacky boots, and this person, it seems, might be doing a bicycle kick where they're kicking at the Lucio ball above them. The next layer though, which I believe is beneath the first Korean soccer poster appears to be a poster featuring some sort of fighter jet or other aircraft, as we can tell from the dual canted vertical stabilizers here at the back. It's worth noting that it looks at least somewhat similar to the shuttle we see at the end of the Retribution PVE mission, which rescues the Blackwatch agents after their mission in Rialto, as we can see in this side-by-side -side comparison here. However, it's impossible to say whether these are in fact supposed to actually be the same ship. So overall, it's hard to tell whether there's any further interesting meaning to these posters beyond them just just being nice little visuals to include in the city, but it was still fun being able to unpack everything they contain, and I'd definitely love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below on whether or not you think either of these images have any greater significance. One other quick little easter egg in Midtown, which I think is worth mentioning, is that if we look at the Omnic firefighter who's actually driving the payload we escort to the train station, we can see that their name is Chaco. This is almost certainly a reference to former Blizzard employee Chaco Sunny, who used to be an Overwatch executive producer before leaving the company in 2021. And finally, the last secret slash detail I'd like to talk about when it comes to Midtown New York is the removal of the Zephyrus train billboard, which we previously saw present in the Midtown train station. Now, this is far from the only visual update the map has gotten since the last time we saw these maps showcased, but the reason the change to this billboard specifically sticks out so much is because of the curious link the original billboard may have had to a possible upcoming new hero named Zephyrus. Now, about a year ago, I made an entire video talking about this character, who's most notably present on the Rome map, and thus I'll be talking much more about him once we get to Rome, because there have been some very interesting developments for him there. But it is interesting that the name Zephyrus, which was very prominently featured on this one billboard in particular, has instead been replaced by the Mercury 3. However, this same Zephyrus train, which we originally saw featured in this billboard, can still be seen in a couple different locations. We can see very small images of it on the newspapers being sold within the train station itself, as well as in some of the various pamphlets, postcards, and other details present as part of the souvenir stands, in addition to a small model of both the train engine and passenger car, which are on display in the New York Transit Museum across the street from the train station itself. So it's interesting to note that this white 
Zephyrus train hasn't disappeared entirely from the map of Midtown, but it is at the very least a change worth taking note of. And speaking of Zephyrus, now let's move on to the next brand new Overwatch 2 map, Colosseo Rome. Like Midtown, Colosseo has a ton of references to real-world Roman architecture, structures, and locations, but today I'd like to focus specifically on the Overwatch pertinent details and secrets, the first and biggest of which is the new images we get of Zephyrus and Maximus. Now previously, the only image we actually had of these gladiators was this poster seen here, showing two robot gladiators engaging in combat while being controlled by two human pilots via some sort of high-tech motion tracking system. System. But now that we've actually had direct access to the map itself, we can see this screen present in one of the sports bars located on the map, and it gives us a lot more information about what's going on between these two gladiators. Starting with the left side of the screen, we can actually see a bit of Italian text which reads Revenge, with subtext beneath it reading Max v Zef 2, thus indicating that these two gladiators certainly have some sort of notable history together. Moving on to the right side though, we can actually see scoreboard for each of the current combatants, with scores listed for the first four out of five rounds. Now, I did my best to analyze the numbers present here on the scoreboards for each of these two gladiators to see if there are any hidden details, perhaps referencing a release date or other interesting information about them, which is something that Blizzard has done with past new hero releases. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to discern anything of note. Maybe there's something hidden here that I just missed, or maybe they're just merely scores and nothing more than that. Although based on their scores as of the fourth round, we can see that Zephyrus seems to be pretty handily beating Maximus, and the absence of scores for the fifth round in particular indicates that the match we hear going on within the Colosseum while playing on Colosseo is in fact the final round of Zephyrus and Maximus's revenge match. Now, having covered the boring parts of this image, let's get to the robot elephant in the room, which of course is Zephyrus's character design. He looks awesome. As I mentioned previously, we only got a very close-up look of what this character actually looks like, but now we can very clearly see that there is quite a bit going on with him. Most notably are the giant wings, which seem to be sticking out of his back, which are incredibly reminiscent of Mercy's wings in the way they're structured with these sort of individual spikes or feathers, I guess you could call them, poking out of the back. Him possessing this sort of apparatus makes sense, given that Zephyrus in Greek mythology is a wind god and could potentially potentially indicate that the hero himself is capable of flight to some extent. Aside from just the wings though, we can also see that he appears to be wielding two swords, both of which have very needle-like appearances and interestingly appear to be very similar in visual design to each of the individual feathers on his back-mounted wings. Additionally, the fact that the feathers on his wings seem to be sticking up and out in a much more aggressive, almost porcupine-like formation as opposed to Mercy's wings, which have a much more gentle, non-threatening aesthetic to them, could indicate that Zephyrus's wings themselves are actually some sort of weapon. While I'm talking about it though, I guess I should also address Maximus as well, who is the other gladiator involved in this current gladiator battle. But as I discussed in my previous video focusing on Zephyrus being a potential new hero, Maximus more than anything just feels like a reference to generic Roman gladiators, which I think is even further emphasized by the fairly generic looking gladiator design we see him possessing here. Another key detail to point out about these two gladiators is that both have the Italian flag next to their name in this image, thus indicating that both of them are from either Rome specifically or perhaps even just Italy in general, which is actually kind of strange for Zephyrus given that, as I mentioned earlier, Zephyrus is a Greek god as opposed to a Roman one. So I would have expected Zephyrus to have the Greek flag here next to his name, but no, the flags present seem to indicate that both combatants are in fact Italian. There isn't too much more to discuss about Zephyrus and Maximus just based on the new info we have here, although with the new visual design for the character, it certainly opens up a lot of doors for speculation about possible roles, kits, and abilities he might end up having, so be sure to let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see me delve more into that side of him and even speculate on what kind of hero he might end up being. 
However, Zephyrus and Maximus are far from the only notable gladiators we see present on this new Roman Colosseo map, as in this room, which we see mirrored across both sides of the push map, includes three statues of what are presumably also Roman gladiators, being Camilla, Magnus, and Titus. Now, each of these characters have a very unique visual design of their own, all clearly inspired from Roman gladiator aesthetics, but it's hard to say whether there's any more significance to them beyond just being possible references to past gladiatorial combatants. None of them seem to have quite as unique or interesting of a character design as Zephyrus does, and furthermore, the names of these characters themselves could in fact just merely be references to Roman history and mythology. Both Magnus and Titus were the names of past Roman emperors, and Camilla is the name of a well-known mythological Roman warrior princess. Additionally, beyond just being possible references to Roman history, these specific names could also in fact be referencing three World of Warcraft characters characters who share these same names. Now, it should be noted that none of these Warcraft characters really have much of a visual similarity to any of these statues we see here, and thus the reference seems to only go as far as the name, but considering how often Blizzard likes sneaking little references like this to their other IPs into Overwatch, it does seem plausible that the names of these three characters are in fact just subtle references to various characters in WoW. But moving on from Rome and back to North America, next up we have New Queen Street Toronto, which has what is perhaps the single most curious secret out of the four brand new Overwatch 2 maps, which are these two patches of graffiti we see in alleyways on opposing sides of the map. Now the detail which easily sticks out most from each of these two patches is this bizarre triangle eye symbol, which is extremely reminiscent of the eye symbol we saw in Sombra's origin story a number of years ago, which is seemingly tied to some sort of greater mystery or network of connections behind the scenes of the major Overwatch storyline. And while the symbol we see in this graffiti isn't identical to what was in Sombra's origin story, the designs are certainly similar enough that it seems extremely likely that the two are in some way connected. Furthermore, in both of these graffiti spots, we can see a bit of text accompanying this design, which at first glance appears to be completely illegible, but is actually just highly stylized English characters. Starting with this particular pattern, Patch, we can see that it actually translates to we are all one within the iris, which I'm sure is a very familiar sounding phrase given that it's very similar to many of the quotes spoken by Zenyatta. On the opposing side of the map, the graffiti says something a bit creepier perhaps, which is that if we consider the I triangle on the right side of the image to be the letter A, translates to Mandata lives. Mandata lives, of course, is clearly a reference to the fact that Mandata dies in Tracer and Widowmaker's animated short, and thus whoever sprayed the graffiti in this alleyway perhaps has a slightly different take on what it means when an Omnic dies. Perhaps it's alluding to the idea that an Omnic is never truly dead, but rather lives on in some sort of greater sense, perhaps even as part of the Iris. Now, there are certainly a lot of different ways you could interpret the meaning behind this graffiti. Given the text present in both different graffiti patches, it seems incredibly likely that this graffiti was painted by an Omnic. Perhaps even an Omnic who's a bit more radically minded, especially considering that we know during the story events of Overwatch 2, Toronto, Canada will become overrun by Null Sector. So it's possible that the presence of these two graffiti patches are actually supposed to be early indicators of Omnic unrest with in the city. It's hard to say exactly how this is going to play into the Null Sector invasion we know is going to be happening later down the line, but it is a very interesting set of graphics to have present in the map and certainly seems to be building up to something bigger. Another thing which I think is worth pointing out is the fact that this graffiti in Toronto is very reminiscent of the graffiti we see in Kanazaka, and given that the graffiti in Kanazaka has been implied to almost certainly be building up to the release of a future Overwatch 2 hero, it makes you wonder whether this graffiti and New Queen Street could be building up to something similar as well. Another curious little detail to take note of with this graffiti though is this little logo we see here which is present on both different versions of it which appear to be highly stylized characters reading T4 which may in fact be a reference to Team 4 which is the internal name used to refer to the Overwatch dev team within Blizzard. And the last thing I'd like to touch on when it comes to New Queen Street Toronto is actually the music. Now all four of the brand new maps added with Overwatch 2 thus far have at least a few different locations 
locations across them where they have unique music playing in various stores, outlets, and other hotspots. However, I wanted to highlight this aspect on Toronto specifically because not only does it have the most unique music locations out of the four maps currently added, but also easily some of the best tunes. So I just wanted to take a moment real quick to play you some samples of some of my favorite tunes heard across the map. Now, there are many more locations with music beyond the ones I just played here, and I did record prolonged audio samples of each and every one of them, even the maps outside of Toronto, so if people are interested, I might go ahead and end up releasing a video in the next couple days featuring just the music of all the different maps without my commentary or anything overlapping it. If that's something you're interested in seeing me upload, then be sure to let me know in the comments down below. And otherwise, now let's move on to the fourth and final new Overwatch 2 map, Circuit Royale Monte Carlo. So starting off, let's consider the simple objective of the map, which is for the attackers to escort an F1 race car from a casino through the pit stop area and finally into the atrium of a hotel. Now, unlike the Midtown map, there doesn't seem to be quite as evident of a reason behind why we're actually pushing this race car all the way through Monte Carlo, but it is certainly possible that there is some sort of greater meaning or reference behind this mission. And it could potentially have to do with the race times we see on this scoreboard board here. Curiously, we can see that those partaking in the race actually appear to be a mix of both human drivers as well as either Omnics or perhaps just AI vehicles. Looking closely at the payload itself as well as every other race car we can actually see physically present in Circuit Royale, they all at first glance appear to be automated, meaning that perhaps the vehicles themselves are autonomous racers with their own AIs, or at the very least are perhaps just remotely controlled by human and or Omnic drivers. That being said though, there is certainly some suspicious activity going on when it comes to the actual times we see present on this leaderboard. The majority of lap times listed here are within one to two minutes of each other, which seems like a fairly realistic range of values, with the one notable exception being Acceleratron, whose track time is significantly shorter than all the other racers. It's hard to determine what exactly to make of this discrepancy. Simply considering the physics of having a vehicle move this much faster than all the other vehicles in the race feels not only extremely dangerous even for automated vehicles, but really, really suspicious. So much so that it almost raises the question of whether the race times have actually been tampered with to some extent, as the radical difference in scores we see present here are somewhat reminiscent to the hacked video game scores we see on maps like Blizzard World, where we know that Sombra was messing around and up to no good. So whether there's a similar thing going on with the race times we see here, or we're just supposed to believe that Acceleratron is just incredibly good at driving, is kind of up for debate at this point. Another thing that's worth noting though about Acceleratron, the supercharged racer, is that they apparently hail from Numbani, as we can see from both their team abbreviation, as well as the flag present on their garage. Likewise, we can see that the racer Turbotron, which is the name present on not only the payload we're actually moving throughout the map, but also on every Every other physical race car we can see, even the ones not in Turbotron's garage, apparently hails from Brazil, which perhaps could have some sort of interesting tie into the Rio map, which as I mentioned earlier is one of the maps we have confirmed to be coming in Overwatch 2. Beyond just the racing aspects of Circuit Royale, there are a few other additional little easter eggs present in this map, such as the little Hearthstone and World of Warcraft references which can be seen on signs in the Attacker's Casino spawn room, a bar named Calypso in the Defender's Final spawn room, which is a reference to the codename used by Blizzard when developing Overwatch 2 internally, prior to it being first officially revealed at BlizzCon 2019, and even a pink version of Junkrat's Duck Floaty from his Beach Rat skin floating in the pool outside the final stretch of the map. 
Curiously, in the alpha, the rip tire Junkrat has in this skin was also changed to the color pink from its previous yellow color, which perhaps was just an accidental bug introduced when they added in this little floaty to the pool, or maybe was an intended change in design of the skin. More than likely, this change was unintentional and I assume is going to end up being fixed in later patches, but it is fun to see that this was a little detail Blizzard added to the latter portion of Monte Carlo, especially given that you can actually ride the floaty as it floats around the pool. And one final thing I'd like to real briefly touch on, given that I'm talking about interesting details within Overwatch maps, is an update which took place in the first spawn room of Watchpoint Gibraltar, which now features the updated Command Center as seen back during BlizzCon 2019 in the initial Overwatch 2 reveal, as well as a little workstation which evidently belongs to May based on the various details and items scattered across it. Aside from Gibraltar though, there didn't appear to be any notable changes to any of the other older Overwatch 1 maps that were playable in the alpha, aside from changes to their time of day, and the addition of a few miscellaneous vehicles and other bits of terrain to help add a bit more cover now that there's only going to be one tank per team instead of two. But anyways, that does it for all the major secrets, hero teasers, and other little easter eggs present in the first four new Overwatch 2 maps added to the first beta. Sometime either later today or tomorrow, I'll be uploading full map walkthroughs of each of these four brand new maps without any commentary or discussion whatsoever on top of it, so you can just get a proper look at the actual layouts of the maps, as well as all the other little details on them that weren't significant enough for me to talk about specifically in this video. So be sure to stay tuned for that, along with a number of other discussion videos I have in the works for Overwatch 2, and let me know your thoughts on all these new map secrets in the comments down below. Are you interested in learning more about Zephyrus as a possible new hero coming to Overwatch 2? Or maybe you're more interested in seeing what happens with the mysterious eye graffiti present in Toronto. Either way, I'd love to hear from you, and thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, hit up that bell icon, and come join my Discord server to hang out and never miss any future Overwatch 2 news and content. Special thanks to my YouTube channel members who help make these videos possible, and if you'd like to join them to earn some cool rewards, then just hit that join button down below. Otherwise, this is Master Ian Gamer signing off, and until next time, have a great day.